Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and Module 3 on Reactive Chemistry. This is video number 26 on the effect of surface area on reaction rate. This continues our little mini-series in looking at the factors that affect the rate of a chemical reaction. So the second one we're going to be looking at is the effect of surface area. In the diagram that we've I've pinched from our Pearson textbook, you can see that we have on the um, left hand side some granules of zinc, so relatively large pieces of zinc. On the right hand side, we have powdered zinc, so very small, fine, tiny particles of zinc. The granules of zinc have a larger size and therefore they tend to react very slowly with the hydrochloric acid. Whereas the powdered zinc, which has a larger surface area, reacts much more rapidly with the hydrochloric acid. From these diagrams, we can see there's a relationship between surface area and reaction rate such that as we increase the surface area of particles, we increase the reaction rate. But how does this work? Well, probably the simplest way of demonstrating it is to think about a cube. When we have a cube, our cube has uh, a regular number of um, sides and edges. We can work out its volume very easily. Um, let's say it's a four by four by four cube. Uh, if each of these is in centimeters, then we can work out both the volume which is just four times four times four, which is 64 cubic centimeters, and surface area, and there are six sides, six surfaces, and each of these surfaces is a four by four, which is um, six lots of 16 or 96 square centimeters. But what happens to the surface area when we start to split the cube up into smaller pieces? Let's say that all we decide to do is to cut each of these sides in half. Let's sort of um, give this a bit of a three dimensional effect here. Um, so we decide that we're going to cut each of these uh, in half. That means that each individual one will um, be now of two centimeters. Um, so we need to make sure that as we go through, we look at each of these little cubes separately. So now each of our cubes, I won't go any further because it'll just get too messy to see, but now we've got lots of little cubes, each of which is a two by two by two. Now, um, hard to see from the diagram that I've drawn, but effectively, if you cut um, each of these sides in half, you're going to end up with eight lots of these cubes. There's going to be eight little two by two cubes. So we have to stack them one on top of the other and side by side to return to our original four by four by four. So we have eight cubes altogether. All fitted together, they still fit into the same volume. So our volume has not changed. But if we were to separate each of these, while the volume remained the same, the surface area is now very different. We still have six sides. Now each of the sides is two by two, so it's six times four, which is 24. But because we now have eight of these individual little cubes, we now have to multiply this 24 by eight. Eight fours are 32 and three, 16 and three is 19, 192 centimeters squared. You can see the relationship by cutting each of these in half is that we've actually doubled the surface area. So we now have twice as much surface area as we did before. Now this is just splitting the cube in half on each of the sides. You can imagine if we ground this up, if we, if we made even just um, one by one by one centimeter cubes, we're gonna continue to massively increase the amount of surface area that we have. In chemical terms, that's equivalent to individual um, atoms, molecules, or ions, being in contact with other reactants that are part of the reaction. So when we look at our granules of zinc, 
we know that the zinc atoms that are in contact with the hydrochloric acid are in smaller numbers than what they are when the zinc is granulated. There are a much larger number of atoms and they are that are in contact with the hydrochloric acid and hence this increases the reaction rate. It allows us to draw a distinction in the relationship between surface area and reaction rate such that as we increase the surface area we increase the rate of the reaction. Hopefully you'll get a chance in class to carry out an experiment to see if this is actually the case. So good luck and thanks for watching.